All right. Welcome, everybody. Still a number of attendees streaming in, but I know there's a lot of you on the line already, so I don't want to wait any longer to get things started. So uh, first, good morning, afternoon, uh, evening, wherever in the world you're tuning in from. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Really excited to be able to spend a little bit of time uh, looking at the Autodesk Build product today uh, and also spending a little time giving you some context around sort of how and why we built this product uh, and platform. So as we get through, uh, you know, kind of this intro part, just want to give you some sort of standard uh, housekeeping info. Everybody is on mute um, to help reduce background noise. We appreciate you for being patient with that. The GoToWebinar uh, console has a questions box in it. If you have questions as you go along, please go ahead and type them in uh, that box. We'll be looking at them as we go along, certainly addressing anything around audio or uh, logistical questions. Um, may pop a question or two in during the uh, session, but are gonna try to leave some time at the end to address uh, the questions that you have uh, on that. And we will uh, be recording this uh, and a link to that recording is gonna be sent out following the call. If you wanna listen to anything that you missed or pass along to a colleague. So with that, let's go ahead and kind of get started and wanted to start by just introducing uh, your speakers today. So I'm Tristan Wallace. I'm a senior manager for the product marketing organization at Autodesk Construction Solutions, and my team uh, supports Autodesk Build uh, as well as many of the other um, construction offerings uh, at Autodesk. I've been at Autodesk uh, almost six years now. Uh, I spent the whole time focusing on um, our construction solutions from BIM 360 on through um, many of the solutions we've acquired over the last couple of years. And, and again, now really excited to be supporting Autodesk Build. And I have with me today, uh, Michael Bugby or Bugs. So I'll let Bugs introduce himself uh, to you and then we'll keep going. Absolutely, thanks Tristan. So like I said, my name is Michael Bugby, uh, just call me Bugs. Uh, I'm a customer success manager here at Autodesk. Uh, which basically means I am here to work hand in hand with our customers to make sure that they are finding success in their purchases of our Autodesk solutions. Been here a little over five years, so a little shade less than than Tristam, but like I said came came from industry before that. So uh, happy to uh, happy to be here and help uh, help you guys out today. Awesome, thank you, Bugs, very much for your time today. I know everybody's going to be excited to see what we uh, have to deliver. So. With that, let's actually give you a rundown of, of what you can expect today. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of an overview of Autodesk Build and, and how we believe that it can help you support your businesses. Uh, Bugs is going to join me again, and we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the different capabilities and the workflows that Autodesk Build support with a look kind of inside the product um, to demonstrate each of those uh, different areas. And then with what time we have left, we'll certainly spend some time addressing the questions uh, that you have, and we'll provide you some resources at the end too that are available to you to dig more into the product as well as some, some opportunities for more in-depth uh, demonstrations uh, and conversations around that. All right, before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a quick poll. We wanna use that um, poll to really get an understanding of what you know today uh, about Autodesk Build. So I'm gonna give everybody a few minutes to um, just uh, fill out this poll. All right, that's awesome. Karen, you can go ahead and close the poll. Super, that's great. All right, so as we get in, it looks like we've got a really nice cross section uh, of knowledge of Autodesk Build and coming from a couple of different perspectives, which is which is great. And I think everybody's gonna get um, some information on that. So what's Autodesk Build all about, right? This is a product that we announced this past November at our annual user conference, Autodesk University, uh, and it is one of the products on our new Autodesk Construction Cloud 
platform, right? This is a new product uh, from Autodesk. And depending on how familiar you may be with Autodesk construction management offerings today, as you look at the product, you're gonna see a lot of pieces of plan grid in the product. You're gonna see a lot of pieces in BIM, of BIM 360 in the product. And the reason for that is because Autodesk build is built as a combination of the best of those two offerings. Right? But we're delivering it in an entirely new way. And that's on top of a single platform. Right. And so you see the headline of this blog post that, that we uh, published when we announced it's one platform to connect the office and field. It's a big promise, but it's it's one that we believe we're delivering on. And I'm excited today to be able to talk to you a little bit about the why as well as a little bit about the how. So let's kind of work through uh, this story as we uh, get into it. So why, you know, why is it the one platform? is important you know what is this need to connect the office and field and ultimately connect design processes to pre-construction to construction and one of the big reasons we feel is that nearly every company and project and person today is at a different stage of their digitization or their digital maturity but at the end of the day everybody needs to work towards a single common goal right that common goal is finishing that next project on time and on budget and in as a profitable way possible for you, whoever you are, whether it's a subcontractor or a contractor or an owner, you know, et cetera. And there's currently still a disconnection that can stand in the way of those goals. And when I say disconnection, what do I mean by disconnection? <clears throat> you know, I mean kind of this, just think about the team that's working on your latest project, right? It's almost certainly made up of multiple teams across all phases of the project may look something like this, right? And there's a really good chance that emails and FTP sites and generic collaboration tools like Office 365 are the connective collaborative tissue in your project today. <clears throat> and as we start thinking about what technology is in place for more specific design and construction workflows, there's a really good chance that there's at least five different applications being used in each of those phases. And of course, those applications are rarely in sync, right? Let's not even think about, you know, the large percentage of companies, depending on where geographically you are, who still rely on paper to keep those teams in sync. You know, it can be upwards of 70%, um, you know, those companies. So it's unquestionably true that construction is an incredibly collaborative industry. Jim Lynch, who we work for, you know, calls it a team sport and it's very true, but it is also still one of the most fragmented. <clears throat> So that fragmentation does have a huge impact on project outcomes across all levels of organizations, right? It has an impact on teams, right? They're disconnected and there's risk of working from outdated information due to all of those multiple applications or even the lack of digital um, adoption. At the project level, that disconnection between the office and the field for a lot of the avoidable rework that um, that occurs on every project, which impacts cost and quality, delivery time or profitability. And there's, of course, a really big impact at the business level. Um, unused and lost project data reduces the potential opportunities for better visibility into a portfolio, smarter strategic decisions, uh, and so on. So. You know, we certainly believe, we hope you do too, you know, from you, that more connection from people to data can reduce all of this fragmentation. And while it's not the only route for improving this, technology plays a key role uh, with this opportunity to become more connected. So what are we doing about it and how do we kind of approach, uh, approach this? Right, we kind of look at three core areas. The first one is digitization. We're focused on enabling the construction business for today's digital age, right? It's not just about helping companies move off paper, although that's a really important and essential first step. It's about digitizing processes so that our customers can enhance the way that information is shared through connected devices, no matter where those teams are, right? Helping to enable faster and better decisions by working from a, from a single source of truth or a common data environment. Second thing is around workflow integration, bringing business processes together, automating workflows across all the phases, 
connecting project data um, to break down those silos that exist across financial and project management and bidding and maintenance systems, right? So this way it helps everybody benefit from all that data. And finally, as we're bringing all this data together and capturing all the critical information during the project, we're really trying to help you leverage that data to improve your business, right? Helping you to extract insights and even predict a wide range of issues and risks before they happen. <clears throat> right, helping you optimize your data so that you can deliver projects you know, better, more profitably, more safely, um, you know, et cetera. So these three things are core to everything we do and certainly are core to how we built out on it. You know, so what will this look like or what can this look like? Think about that project team of yours again, right? What are the individual needs for each of those people out there? Think about how you collaborate with them. And take that a step further. Think about how do they collaborate with each other, right, without you. And now we're going to just think about what the impact of, you know, this disconnection today is on your business, right? Does it allow for everyone to think about cost and schedule and quality and safety using the same common set of data or the same information, right? How well do the actions of one team support and inform the next team up, right? Or are you in a situation where a lot of times you're starting from scratch every time a new phase or a new team starts? All right, and then what would be the value if you could bring these teams and team members and data together, enabling easier collaboration from a single platform? <clears throat> right, whether that's in the office or that's the job site, you know, think about how connected devices and connected data can potentially change how your business operates. And how this extends to collaboration through all of the workflows for all of the phases of your project right what's the what's the potential for integrating workflows to help teams optimize their desired outcomes while making sure that all of your companies can expand their businesses and be more profitable right we think that all of this is only possible through a strong connected foundation a foundation with shared data to allow more assertive decision making and enable those insights all right, a place where documents are shared so work does happen from that single source of truth and that all of this data together helps construction teams deliver and again predict better business outcomes. <clears throat> it's, this is sort of the story behind the Autodesk Construction Cloud. We introduced Construction Cloud to really support this connectivity and connected construction message. All right, we're trying to help construction companies all over the world forget the old days of a highly fragmented industry and to really benefit from connected construction. Doing this with things like best-in-class technology to support workflows from design to plan to build and operate, with data shared and connected across phases, informing decisions during design and construction, all the way through turnover of data for operations and for ownership. All right, analysis of that data to identify and prioritize, resolve problems early in the life cycle, and connecting to the partners that you need to help build with the ability for you to help choose the right partners for each and every job, right? So this is our vision. <clears throat> and this is how we're delivering on that vision with the Autodesk Construction Cloud Platform. This new platform today supports a set of capabilities from design into planning, uh, construction, you know, through handover. We're offering through three core new product offerings Autodesk BIM Collaborate for design collaboration and coordination, Autodesk Takeoff for quantification, and what we're here today to talk about Autodesk Build for, uh, you know, for project management, cost, field collaboration, uh, and through handover. And every one of these products supports a set of core workflows and are all connected by common foundational elements, which include things like document management workflows, that common data environment we've touched on, data and analytics through Insight and centralized setup and administration. Let's take one click down into Autodesk Build. Right? So you can see here, supports a range of different capabilities and workflows. And it supports project management, which we know is essential to the success of a project. Build offers really highly configurable project management workflows in supportive areas like RFIs and submittals and meetings. It's built in a way that serves the needs of the field and the office together. <clears throat> it supports programs like quality 
and safety and commissioning, all in a mobile first approach that helps to improve collaboration on the job site. And they're structured in a way that's standardized so that you can make sure the data that's collected is, is in a way that can be used to improve the project and the business. It includes cost management, but cost management built for the project manager, which helps to improve cost control, do things like provide real-time visibility into cost-related risks, help to improve forecast accuracy by centralizing cost activities in the cloud, and probably most importantly, within the context of that overall project and everything that's going on. So this is project management, field collaboration, cost, all in one offer, all in one platform connected. All right, that's where we see the value of on this build. <clears throat> all right, helps teams really be set up to work from accurate information all together. And when questions arise, they can be escalated, investigated, resolved, and et cetera, without missing a beat. One last thing before we get into the product here, you know, that may all feel like a lot and no doubt Autodesk Build is a really, really robust tool. Um, but we've also built it on the premise that in order to be affected and adopted and loved, it's got to be simple to use. <clears throat> and that focus on simplicity shines through in the mobile app companion to Autodesk Build, which is called Plan Group Build. <clears throat> the name of that app is as intentional as it sounds. It's representative of how widely loved the Plan Grid mobile experience has been for years. And we brought that forward into Autodesk Build in the mobile app and across the board uh, with simplicity, but with, of course, a host of improvements. <clears throat> so appreciate you kind of letting me give you that preamble here. I want to kind of move forward into our next section here and talk about how all of this works. So we're going to let bugs come back on uh, here for the next section. We're going to spend the next 15 minutes or so walking through some of the areas of construction that Autodesk Build uh, supports, showing you a little bit what the product looks like and how it can support all of those workflow requirements in a connected way. And as we walk through this product, I, I want to kind of keep three core concepts in mind, things that I've already brought up. Right, Autodesk Build and honestly the whole Autodesk Construction Cloud platform are really built to support connected data, connected workflows, and connected insight. And we're going to start here talking about connected data, which is supported in our platform in what you know, most in the industry are now calling a common data environment or a CDE. Right, a CDE is the connective tissue in our software that makes sure the output from one workflow is the input to that next downstream workflow. Right? It's the layer underneath the whole solution that makes sure the entire project life cycle is connected together. Having all project phases and teams working from that same foundation in their individual workflows ensures that everybody can access the holistic project data that's accurate on both the front end and back end of their work. And as mentioned before, there's a lot of software offerings used in every project that address individual workflow issues but data gets siloed and stuck in those applications. So removing those silos is incredibly important <clears throat> for collaboration. You know, but of course, you have to be careful because just opening up that access is not necessarily the right approach either. It's gotta be done in a controlled, configurable manner. And so let's you know, move on now. I'm gonna hand this over to Bugs for a minute here to take a look at how Autodesk Build is helping our projects, teams organize distribute and share those files for projects. All right, Bugs, let's take a look. Perfect. All right, so as you can see here, this is going to look very similar to the BIM 360 interface, but obviously have some, some nice features of being able to have everyone in the same location. So part of having everyone in the same location is you need to have the ability to control that. So people are going to be able to need to see and be able to do certain things. So it has a very robust permissioning structure to where I can do it by roles, I can do it by company. So in this case, I could search for like Autodesk, for instance, and you can see it's showing me, hey, people that have that e Autodesk email address, but also people that have the company Autodesk. So if I invite a new member into my project, it's going to have those permissions. 
I also have the ability to create custom attributes so I can tag certain documents with certain things. I'm not restricted to certain things that I want to do. It has that customization for it. And being that kind of CD work with a lot of different file formats. So in this case, what you're seeing here is the ability to look at a Revit file without having to download it, without having to have a collection and being able to kind of restrict that view down to where you can have a conversation around utilizing the model. If you have the model, that's great. You have the ability to use it, talk about it, see the permissions for it and everything. As we can kind of move along, you can see we have an, once again, another kind of little area that we can do so we can have things set up for coordination. If we have drawings, maybe we need to set this up to have it set for a review session. Maybe it's ready to be pushed to the field or maybe I need to create a transmittal of saying, hey, I'm sending you this just so you're aware of it. But what's nice about it is I can go in and actually from within the tool, take this and actually publish it to the sheet section. So that's gonna be where it's going to take that, extract out all that information, break it out, slip sheet, do all that. So I'm not having to download and upload anything. I'm staying within that same environment as I'm working through my process. So I'm utilizing kind of from the, the design side, right, of being able to, to look with models, look with drawings, and then I can push that to the construction kind of, of, of the field team. That's super. Thank. Oh, so going? Nope, nope, I'm good. All right, cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, Bug, you stayed inside of, of Autodesk Build and that little build dropdown, um, you know, toolbar in the product while you were talking through that. But can you talk a little bit about how information can also be shared across uh, other teams who may be using Autodesk Construction Club products for quantification or for coordination? Like absolutely absolutely you kind of saw it there in a second where i had that had that specific folder for coordination and what that's going to do is is you're going to be all be looking at the same thing just kind of through different areas so if i do have a team utilizing autodesk takeoff or utilizing um bim collaborate i can use the same model or the same sheets and just go into that different interface but all I'm still looking at the file section. That file is kind of going back to the slide that you had showed previously there, Tristam, that document management side stretches across everything. So from the design side of using Artist BIM Collaborate Pro to Artist Takeoff to Artist Build, Artist, we're all utilizing the same structure of files and location. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Bugs. Appreciate that. It's been a bunch of questions that have come in. Um, we're going to try to, you know, triage some of those, but also cover them at the end. So really, really good questions about uh, about what we just saw. Um, but I want to kind of keep moving through some of the workflows here. And and so now that we, you know, have an understanding of this concept of connected data, right? That really enables um, connected workflows. And and there are, of course, hundreds of workflows on a project with each one being completely dependent uh, on the last. And a lot of times, we you know, these workflows are completed by different people and many times different companies um, on a single project. What we should all be looking for is to make sure that each of those teams are set up to work from the right information, accurate information you know, together. And so when questions arise, right, they can be escalated, investigated, resolved, you know, certainly without missing a beat. And there's a few things that make up, um, you know, the workflows for those. So you know, want to go through and, and talk about a couple of those common ones and again, show the, the project or the product uh, in support. So Want to start here around core workflows, uh, you know, focus on quality and safety, which certainly, uh, you know, impact many teams uh, on the site. And we certainly want to support a few things that are critical when doing anything on a job site, right? People being able to access that information anywhere, anytime, uh, online or offline. Right? The ability to easily and quickly record observations in a few very easy steps and the ability to be able to view design information in context with the assurance that it's always up to date. All right. In short, you need a full set of construction collaboration tools all on a mobile device. And that's what that Plan Grid Build mobile app delivers. So, Bugs, let's go ahead and take a look at the app. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head about connected workflows. If the office and the field aren't talking, then all the all the workflows are are, are going to fail, right? So we are utilizing the uh, Plan Grid BIM app. So from here, once again, you have that quick access home toolbar. So I can see everything that's that's favorited sheets, I, tasks that are assigned to me. I can you quickly go into a sheet. I can once again have that nice, easy interface doing markups. Quickly be able to add add issues of anything, be able to add the photos for once again, supplementing that information. Quickly be able to look at old sheets, old versions, but also be able to compare that and be able to share that of kind of what I'm seeing very quickly, very easily. So I'm able to look at it and then share a screenshot exactly of what I'm looking for, which can be very nice. I can favorite these, I can search for them, tag them, you know, all the nice user functionality that we're needing to, to do. Once again, you can see the for the field access. So being able to look and utilize at those 3D models as a supplemental information for that 2D documentation. Because as you can see on this type of project, there's a lot of curves, there's a lot of things going on. So being able to understand it and be able to see it in a three-dimensional space in addition to the two-dimensional documents is fantastic. Being able to also utilize the form. So this is great for standardization. Right, so it doesn't matter if you're using, if you're doing a COVID-19 uh, safety checklist, if you're doing a concrete pre-pour inspection, if you're doing a daily report, if you're doing, doesn't matter what you're doing, you have that standardization of everyone's doing the same thing, which means the the information and the data that you get is going to be much better and more usable as it kind of populates up. Once again, kind of leading downstream, what we're talking about of that connected insight, right? If data's all over the place, you're not gonna know what's going on. Then once again, just quickly being able to look at issues. So once again, as I create observations, as things are happening, I can create them from a document as I'm looking at them or be able to create them of kind of, kind of ad hoc as well. From here, we also have photos. So these photos are actually of my neighbor's house that's being built. So I just ran over there and grabbed some quick snapshots of it. <laughs> So I can take that, I can add markups, additional markups to them as, as we're going along, once again, drawing attention to it. You know, they always say the, a picture's worth a thousand words. All the detail information around the um, GPS information, so now you kind of know where, where I live. And you're also able to cre create tags as well. So I can quickly be able to see, hey, which ones are associated with concrete pours, which ones are able to be on the first floor. And the last thing I want to kind of touch on the mobile side is being able to see all of those meetings. So the toolbox talks, the OAC meetings, the um, anything that we're going through that someone might be working on from a web interface, I have access to be able to see all of that from that mobile device. And you can also see it's very simple, very easy to use. Once again, just kind of going down the line of how we're able to quickly access uh, certain things. Kristen, back to you. That's awesome, Bugs. Thanks so much. We're going to kind of let that video play while I go through this. So I want to take a second here and actually ask a question that I saw pop in because I don't think we're going to look at forms again um, in this presentation. So Bugs, can I ask you a question here on, on the forms that you showed? Are those all preset um, you know, by Autodesk and built into the, the product or can they be created by the user and, and how, can, you know, how can users go ahead and create those? Fantastic question. So we do provide some out of the box ones like that COVID-19 safe, safety checklist. We did create some of those as kind of a package to say, hey, you know, here, you can utilize these. Um, but once again, we just kind of give those as a starting point just to kind of see what to kind of, you know, get the wheels turning for, for some people. Because a lot of times people are moving from a, you know, totally paper process that no one's thought about improving for 30 years so just kind of seeing what's out there but then obviously you know you have the ability to create fully customized forms that are specific to your company that once again you manage and you know autodesk isn't going to going to come in there you know and steal it <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks bugs yeah i mean the the forms uh creation tools and flexibility as well as actually flexibility and how you want to set up how workers collaborate on that is one of the real big strengths of uh of autodesk build so uh, i was glad i caught that question and thanks for for answering that so let's continue on this sort of journey of connected workflows and so we've got the team on the site they're all working collectively from the right info on the app they're capturing those information observations around progress and and questions and whatnot 
you know, so let's think about it now. What happens when something's observed on site and needs to be dealt with, right? What's the process, you know, inside of Auditus Bill for identifying and resolving those? And, and how do we help get the right people involved, right? Is it still up to that project engineer or superintendent to have to spend their time at the end of their very busy day to compile all that data, figure out what to do with it, send out a bunch of urgent emails and try to resolve items before, you know, work gets slowed down, right? How, Let's take a look at kind of how everybody who needs to be involved can stay up to date and, and you know kind of handle these workflows in real time. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we're, once again, we're going in this workflow. We're going to start off in, in taking an issue, right? So that's just once again, just really, really kind of anything of an observation somebody's made. But in this case, we're going to look at this, you know, uh, wrong hardware question, right? So you can see, you know, some information about it, you know, who created it, you know, some activity around it as it's kind of moving along its process. But now it's gotten to a point where you're, where you're like, hey, you know what, this is going to need to be bumped up to an RFI. So instead of getting out of the system or creating something else, I can add a reference to that particular issue to where I can either link it to an existing RFI or if I have that permission, I can create a new RFI. Because once again, I'm moving that workflow along because now, now we're stepping it up to be like, hey, you know what, this this might need to have some cost or some some information around that one as well. So if I go and utilize into my RFI log here, I can start to see all those different RFIs that have been created, you know, whose responsibility that's currently sitting in, that activity for everything that we're going along into it, which can be extremely helpful for it as well. In addition to what we had kind of talked about earlier is around like the meetings, right? So this is once again, another way to standardize that process. So instead of just utilizing a uh, Microsoft Word document that you resave, you can create different uh, meetings that can be used. So in this case of, you know, like a weekly OAC meeting, I can add a Zoom meeting that I can attach to kind of the, the invite, the schedules when it's sent out, I can see who, things are assigned to, I can reference things back into them, give them due dates, and once again, it's kind of creating action items as we're going along, so I can reference RFIs, issues, other sheets. I can, once again, add a calendar invite, so once again, make it to so where it pops up on people's phones, and then easily create follow-up meetings. So what that fo create follow-up is going to do is it's going to create a new meeting, and it's going to carry over all of those open items so you're already setting up your agenda of hey this is what we talked about last time that's still open and it's automatically going to fill that out and any it's any action items that were closed they're not going to move across so i'm not having to go through and manually get ready for that meeting i can just create that follow-up meeting that's going to carry the information that i want over to my new meeting That's awesome, Bugs. Thanks so much again. Thanks for all the questions coming in too. We're going to do our best to, to get to some of these too. So, you know, that was a super good explanation of sort of that issue, sort of a generation and, and escalation up to RFI. But, you know, that of course can, right, that issue may trigger an even bigger impact to, to cost and schedule, right? But we're still tracking that issue in a single system, which certainly can help provide a lot of value in terms of understanding, you know, potential impacts, you know, to the projects. And, and you know, if you think about connected workflows, that just means that information can continue to move between teams quickly, more importantly, without losing any critical context. So, you know, let's kind of bring this this full workflow to a close uh, inside Autodesk Build with this last, uh, last demo here. Absolutely. So this last piece, once again, now we're kind of in the middle of that process. We're starting at the RFI and let's start at this, you know, sync, sync model, right? So we're looking at it, hey, we can no longer get that type of model of sync. The suggested answer is, this, hey, L9010 seems to be the most similar, but I don't know if there's a cost impact yet. So what I can do is I can once again reference a potential change order, PCO, to an existing one or create that. PCO. And what that's going to do is once again, now you're tying your RFI to your PCO, right? So I can hop into my PCO and then that workflow can go along of where I can get a quote, I can see what's, you know, estimated, what's approved. And that process can go through, once again, staying in the same system. So I'm still in my same project into it. 
and I can see and track the status of where things are going. So it's going to be tied and linked because once again, the it's it's all about the information. You know, I kind of kind of joked with Tristram earlier. I was like, you know, no one ever said at the end of a project, man, I wish I had less information about this. So being able to kind of have that history of every type of change order, every type of RFI, to when that information is known, I can set that up to where I can say, hey, you know what, there is a cost impact, or no, there's not going to be a cost impact to here. So now that RFI is now tagged as being, hey, a cost impact. So if I needed to, once again, kind of create a report or anything like that, I can see what RFIs had costing. Same thing over here, you know, once again, we'll kind of touch on the, the change order. So being able to see all the different types of reports that I can get out, we'll kind of touch on reports here in, in a second. But once again, being able to run reports, schedule the reports and get that information out into a kind of usable, more, you know, kind of consumable uh, format as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Bugs. And, and you know, it's, it's, everybody should be able to see from those last three demos, right? There's a direct link from activity and observations in the field that carries to the management and process of the right answer and, and way forward. And sometimes it's going to be as simple as just involving one person to quickly fix a mistake and, and issues like that can be resolved you know, in minutes, right, with, with everybody having access on the site. Or it might be more complex, requiring our buys and a series of meetings change order right but we certainly believe having all of this in a single platform means that it's all captured and tracked and ultimately can be reported on as bugs just show you what can be vital for dealing with things like warranty claims or other disputes where that never enough information um you know kind of comment came from so cool gonna kind of keep moving through and and kind of the final piece that we wanted to talk to you today in relation to how build supports construction or connected construction is around connected insight, right? And all of this connected data and workflows definitely drives an opportunity for more data to be available for you to use for better analytics. Right? Data is is certainly you know the heart of digital transformation, and the more connected the data is, like I said before, the more change it can drive, right? Auditor's build delivers you know, the ability to drive actionable decision-making and predictive insights natively, right? And also, if need be, we make it really easy to get that project data out and use it with tools like Power BI that you might be using to bring together information from all across your business, right? So we're all about making sure you've got the data, you've got it in a standardized way, We've built our reporting tools and analytics capabilities, you know, with this goal in mind to harness the power of, right? We can, you know, we've got a lot of tools inside that that Bugs is going to show that makes it easy, but we also give you the, the opportunity to, to do with it what you may. So Bugs, let's take a look at some of the reporting and dashboards and analytics. Absolutely, absolutely. So once again, so we're going to start out here on the kind of reports logs. This is going to be all the reports that have been ran that I can, once again, just kind of quickly be able to kind of, you know, kind of pull up and view or, or kind of share them out. But more importantly, I want to talk about the templates. So what the templates is going to be doing is where I can set up and filter any type of report that I need to where I can kind of quickly pull it up, right? So in here, you can see, you know, issues that have started in the last 30 days, issues that are five days overdue. So I can quickly come over here and add filters build stack filters on top of each other to where I can then take that and then I can also schedule it. So anything that I can automate. So if I have, once again, an OEA meeting, I can say, hey, this needs to be ran, you know, 15 minutes before that meeting. So it's at the top of everybody's email and I don't have to come in here and manually do that. So it's just eliminating a little bit of the process that I have to do to get ready for a particular meeting. And if I move along to the next piece to be, there we go, awesome. Okay, so in this piece, what it's going to do is, is looking at the different types of dashboards. So once again, this is going to looking at my specific, pro my specific project, and I can customize this to my liking. So I can add different cards, either you know through like a partner card library, through looking at RFIs, through looking at cost issues, anything within the system, I can create a kind of customizable dashboard that I can then utilize 
and see to where, hey, I want to look at all the project issues, or I can filter that down to say, hey, I want to look at my issues. And all of those are all hyperlinked, so I can quickly be able to see that, select it, and go right to it. On the Insight piece, once again, we have some for risk, design, project controls, quality, and safety. But I can also create um, shared dashboards as well. So in this case, for an OAC review, this is going to have all the information for that. So I can share it, and then we're all looking and talking at the same thing. Down the bottom left, you can kind of see, uh, Tristan, if you want to pause it right here, just so I can talk about it for a second. There we go. You see we have that executive overview. So what that's going to do is it's going to take it up to a higher level as far as kind of cross project. So someone that is not necessarily needs to be a part of every single project, but needs to be able to kind of look and see on it. That's where the um, executive overview can come into play. And once again, the data connector. So that's going to be allowing you to get all the information out of your project into maybe you know kind of power bi that you want to work with or uh, any other type of customized report that you want to that isn't that you know once again you're kind of tracking something maybe a little bit different or you're wanting to um, utilize an, an initiative that you have at your company that you can create very specific reporting that can be kind of built out and 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 ran to our, you know, just like the data connector, just like your reports can be scheduled, the data connector can be scheduled, you know, once a week, once a month, to where all that information is going to be updated into all of your different types of dashboards. Because once again, the information's great, but being able to get that information out and look at it in a specific way around this project or around all projects is is probably going to be the best thing. You know, when when I used to work, everything was in Excel spreadsheets, and there was no combining that stuff because you had hundreds of Excel spreadsheets, and nobody was about to try to combine that into something useful. So, having it in one place and have it automated is is, is definitely great, Tristan. Absolutely, thanks, Bugs. Really great high level look um, at the reporting and analytics capabilities and and what bugs show there is is literally just a taste of the different ways that you can customize things and you know, really make the data um, you know work in the way that you and you want to share it um, everything from from those core needs through reports all the way through some of the really sophisticated risk modeling that's available through construction iq which is the machine learning based predictive analytics engine that that underpins um autodesk construction club um, so really appreciate you know kind of uh, bugs you walking through the product and hopefully you know this last section at least gave you a taste of what's in on this build um we're going to give you some more options at the end of this presentation to kind of get an even deeper look uh into the product but uh before i move on to the closing section um you know here at today's webinar bugs anything else you want to you know to share around the products or stuff you've seen or things you forgot to mention <laughs> uh, no i'm sure i'm, I'm, I'm sure there, there's a lot of um i'm i'm missing in the product right you know there's a lot of things you know we wanted to just kind of give you the high level of it you know definitely get your exposure to you know we're here to definitely talk you through you know the process of like i said you know based on the poll question you know if you're completely new to this or you're a long time plan grid or a long time bim 360 user kind of you know what what the what the next steps are obviously like i said tristan will kind of have some links uh, for you guys but obviously you know your your account team is is at autodesk is here to you know talk and, and discuss all this information with you Totally. That's great. All right. So let's kind of wrap wrap through here and uh, we should still have at least a few minutes for questions um, on things. So um, wanted to, again, just sort of summarize and, and close out. And, and you know, Auditor's Build has been commercially available now since February. Um, and But it's been out in the field uh, being tested on real projects for almost coming up on a year now, um, you know, things. And in that time, we've certainly you know, been gathering thoughts from many of the companies we work closely with while developing these products. And I'm not going to read through these quotes, but I like the themes of the quote on as it ties well into, you know, what are what our goals are for the product right so there's a lot in auditors build but we definitely built it in a way that can make it feel personalized and ready to support you or any individual what you need um you know immediately the relevant data alerts on when you need to do something right this concept of one place right if we if we've gotten anything across in the last 45 minutes hopefully that the heart of you know this product is all around connection and connected data and connected workflow and connected teams right and the end of the day this is all about trying to make 
project team's lives easier, right? Putting all the information in one place so that you know where to go, right? And that's really the value of, of connected construction um, in our eyes. And certainly you can see from the people who have, have spent the most time uh, in this product. All right, I want to close out, you know, by being a good marketing soldier here and making sure I kind of deliver the pitch, right? What what makes this different? And, and I'm not going to spend much time here, but, you know, certainly, again, connecting teams and workflows through a single source of truth, right? And the Autodesk Construction Club platform, again, which Build is part of, has all of the construction phases supported in a single platform, right? This foundational data is really the starting point for insights and better decision making. And giving teams access to business insights that can help make them more, you know, able to predict operational and business outcomes. All right. Third thing, this is all about being fully enterprise ready. This product is built on Autodesk Forge, Autodesk Cloud Platform, Development Platform. Right. The Autodesk Construction Cloud Platform delivers this enterprise grade scale. That means we've got, you know, strong access management through granular and configurable permissions. Right better outcomes through configurable RFI, submittal workflows, et cetera, and then powerful additional tools like assets and cost uh, that, that really can help support um, you know, processes as, as they get more and more sophisticated, right? And last but not least, it's powerful, but it's built for pervasive simplicity, right? This laser focus on the principle of being simple. We wanna be able to enforce and enable a consistent interface, a simple user experience that allows people to get their jobs done quickly, right? Without worrying about how to keep data in sync or like where they're working on that stuff. So, you know, we've learned a lot of principles over the years that help to support the adoption of tools like this across personas. And that's what this is really all about. So, you know, kind of keep those things in mind as you, you know, look at all of this build and, and certainly, uh, choices for for construction project management software all right so cool we are going to you know try to take a couple minutes here um to try to answer some of the questions that have come in there's been a lot uh i'm going to need to look over a few um you know to this and as we go along i'm also going to um you know leave this slide up um on things so there's a couple of of links here that you can use uh to do things more so First and foremost, if you haven't, you know, kicked the tires on this product, we have a 30-day trial available. You can grab that, you know, start using it and see what it's like. Um, learn more on the website. And there's some really detailed, good on-demand learning courses um, at our Learn ACC uh, platform. So please, you know, go ahead and look through that. That'll give you the chance to see or learn how to use things as you're, you're working through the trial. Um, I'm also going to have Karen pop up a poll here that we'll leave up as we look through some questions. So really want to you know encourage you to go ahead and take the opportunity to schedule some time with our product experts and and get a deeper dive into build and get some of these additional questions answered. So really hope that this gave you a taste um, you know build and that you continue to look through that along with the Autodesk BIM Collaborate Autodesk Takeoff tools that are part of the platform. So that poll is going to be up. It's going to just hang out there. So please go ahead and fill that out when you feel right. Um, Bugs, any particular questions stand out that you want to start with, or I'll try to ask a couple here in the next few minutes. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of questions around, you know, like if I have a BIM 360 project or if I have a plan grid project, you know, how can I move that project to to Autodesk Build? So um, what's kind of understanding is, you know, plan grid is, is, is still 100% there. BIM 360 is 100% there. Um, Autodesk Build is kind of a, is going to be a separate project to it so it's so you know we do have some ability to kind of you know help in a you know kind of automate a process to kind of utilizing acc connect to get information from bim 360 plan grid into the um into your new autodesk build project but um depending on kind of where the project is i would recommend you know either staying with with plan grid or with bim 360 you know obviously i would also recommend you know talking to your um, RDS account team on seeing exactly, you know, where there might be some 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 kind of feature uh, feature gaps. You know, o overall, you know, obviously we do have BIM 360 customers and plenty of customers that have been test testing this using this out. Like like Tristan had mentioned, you know, is it you know 100% parity between the both of them? Not yet. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we're, we're working towards that definitely. Um, so I would definitely recommend talking to your um, account team to really kind of dive into your workflows and see exactly um, how you guys are utilizing your current solutions and if it makes sense to move up to build. So obviously, you know, there there are going to be some some benefits of moving to it, right? You know, there's if you're a plan good customer, you know, you've never had a cost management solution. So if that's an important piece to you, obviously that's something great to talk about and 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 investigate, you know, no further. Absolutely. Thanks, Bug. Yeah. And I'm actually going to, you know, there's a couple of other questions here too that like I use PlanGrid or I'm looking at both PlanGrid and BIM 360 and sort of just get an understanding of the, the you know, kind of future of those. So as Bug said, PlanGrid and BIM 360 are, you know, absolutely, you know, continuing to be products. Autodesk Build is a net new product. But if you're looking at both, you definitely want to take a look at Autodesk Build because we have really spent a lot of time bringing in the strengths of each of those products into, you know, into one platform. So it is a, yeah, if there's a few things in Plain Grid that you've been looking for and haven't seen, definitely check out on the build. If there's, you know, if you're a Bin360 user and you've been waiting for, you know, items like photos to come in, right? Auto this build is going to help help with that. So we absolutely encourage you work with the the sales teams that you um, you know may be involved with or, or will be and you know, look at your workflows and say, okay, you know, what's going to be right? And it may be, you know, a couple of months that you want to keep working on your current product, but we're going to help you out, get introduced and, and start looking at Auditus Build as, as soon as, um, as soon as possible. Um, there's a few, a uh, couple of questions. One in here, uh, Bugs, maybe you can, you know, kind of answer. And it, it's, I'm, I'm going to try to combine a couple of things. <laughs> so, um, you know, would you say you know, the product, how, how does it support like differing, uh, you know, project teams and, and firm types, right? Contractors and engineers and architects, and, and maybe also if you can touch on the same, you know, time, what's the experience for, for sharing information, uh, you know, from design all the way through operations? Um, if you can touch on that, that'd be great. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a, it's a valid point. You know, like I said, the, the main goal is to once again, stay, in the same project, but be able to have the flexibility to where someone that is, you know, really work utilizing on the design side is going to be restricted in a sense that, you know, if you're not a part of RFIs or submittals, then you don't see them. So right now, specifically, we, we just saw within the build um, kind, of, kind of tab right there, but we do have, once again, for the design team, so it's a little more geared towards what all the design team would have. So once again, it would utilize files, it still utilizes issues, but it's not going to have some of more of the project specific project management aspects of it. Now, obviously they can still be, you know, a part of it if you so choose them to, but once again, you kind of have some ability to restrict through the permissions and through some different things like that. Super. Super. That's great. And there's, there's a little bit of a related question here um, that, that I'll take too. And so it's, you know, I've got a firm that's using uh, BIM 360 or Autodesk Collaborate Pro, right? So that is that is our design co uh, collaboration and model coordination uh, product um, on that. And so the question is kind of what does Build offer that, that that product doesn't? Because it seems like there are some, you know, some items like issues, um, you know, files, whatnot that are that are available in both products. And yes, that's absolutely true, right? So those products are all on the same Autodesk Construction Cloud platform. They share that CVE and admin and insight components. And there are areas like issues, um, you know, markups that are going to be available and seen across your project stakeholders even if they're accessing them from different products. And that's one of the, you know, sort of the beauties of one platform. Um, you know, one of the reasons that we're building all of this on, on the same tech stack is that yes, issues should be able to be, um, you know, created, you know, one place and, and viewed by the stakeholders that need to. So you're gonna see some common elements there. The products itself are sort of packaged and built around different capabilities and really designed for, um, you know, differing firm types. Uh, certainly, we're going to have architects that own subscriptions to build, and we're going to have contractors that own subscriptions to then collaborate, and and that's you know the way it will work too. But it's um, that, that's the kind of value of of one platform. There, um, we're pretty close to up against time here i am going to you know make one more pitch if you haven't you know said hey talk to somebody from 
is yes, to learn more, definitely get these questions answered. I'm going to do my best to work with Bugs and others to address as many of these as possible. Um, but I do want to just kind of cover one more, um, one more item that's here, and it's come up a couple of times. So um, the, you know, on this, talked about Autodesk Build, we've talked about this plan grid build um, mobile app. So, you know, one, Autodesk Build is the product that you subscribe to. The mobile app is connected directly to it and is just what's on the App Store um, for uh, iOS and Android uh, today, uh, Windows being uh, worked on uh, as well. That plan grid build app, I wanna make kind of clear to anybody who uses plan grid today, that is the same app um, that you're using now for plan grid. It is a new app, it is, you know, it's different, but we built it to actually support both plan grid projects and Autodesk build projects. So um, just wanna to, want to make sure people are kind of clear on that, but it is, um, it's a companion app, it's part of Autodesk build, it's not a separate product, um, you know, on that. So certainly check that out and you can in fact, go ahead and download the app and, and sort of kick off a trial from there if that's a, if that's a way you wanna you know, choose to do this. So. Uh, with that, like I said, I'm I'm really excited that there's a lot of questions here. We will do our best to you know, try to reach out to you guys directly um, and follow up with some of these questions. I may even post a little blog post on some of the uh, most commonly asked questions from this webinar. So this has been great. Thank you very much um, for spending the time uh, on all this. Bugs, certainly thank you, you know, very much. And we look forward to talking to all of you very soon. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks, Kristen.